Hi, welcome, and let's talk about creating a schematic library in Altium Designer. Right, so if you have a project you've started in Altium, for instance, I have my project called Example Project of PCB, and I have my schematic page and my PCB doc and whatnot. You don't have to have a PCB document, but let's say you have this set up and you want to add parts to your specific project. How do you do that? How do you make it so that you can go to panels, go to components, and then you have some kind of library specific to your project where you can just go ahead and place parts? How do you build something like this? You know, you can just drop them in there. Well, I'm going to show you how to do that right in Altium Designer. You want to go ahead, right click on your project, and you need to add a library that holds parts in it. In this case, we'll create a schematic library. So do schematic library. Altium automatically creates a new schematic library and creates a component in that library. And then you should get a schematic library tab that shows up on the left with your default settings. If you don't see that for some reason, you can go to panels and activate schematic library. This does not activate or does not become an option unless you have a schematic library document open. So you see here, this is my schematic library document tab here. And you can move these left and right or whatnot. Um, so that's fine. So now we have our schematic library. This is, lists all the parts. And our library is quite empty. So what I'm going to do is show you how you can add parts. So if you want to add, say, New component, you do it like that. You go to Tools, New Component, and then you give it a name, and then you click OK. And you draw the part, you fill in the information, you add a footprint to that part, and then you do that again. You do that for your next part. You go to Tools, New Component. Component number three, you give that a name. You add, the, you add a, you draw a component on here in this canvas, and you add information to the part, and then you add a footprint. And then you keep going like that until you've built your library. I'm going to demonstrate this with one component. This, I don't like the name, so I'm going to change this with edit. And then I can edit the design item ID. Again, if you don't see this, you can go to panels, properties, and it will pull up. For the design item ID, I actually want to add this device. This is the max. 14 something 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 by maxim integrated and this is an ic switch analog double pull double throw so i'm going to copy this manufacturer product number use that as my design item id now this is not the best naming convention you might want to do something like uh give it this name which is more practical and searchable and in fact let's do that let's use this name and here, I don't like spaces in my name, so I'm just going to replace those with underscores or dashes even. Use whatever naming standard your company or organization uses. The reference designator for integrated circuits is U. That's a very standard. Comment. Well, I'll use the manufacturer part number. This is zero in stock. Okay, that's fine. All right, so the manufacturer product number. We'll paste that. Why am I doing that? Because if I want to add or do edit supplier links, it automatically searches for whatever's in the comment. So that's a little trick. You may not have access to this feature, and that's fine. Uh, I just wanted to show that. Many people are using offline solutions for building their libraries. So let's say you want a description here. You need to add a description. I mean, you don't have to have a description in your uh, in your thing here, but it's good to put that. So the parameters, what kind of parameters do we want? We want maybe uh, to add this parameter called manufacturer. And the manufacturer is maxim integrated. I just like to copy it from the digikey right there paste it i want to also add manufacturer part number so we'll go to add parameter 
manufacturer part number tab. And I can just copy that from the comment here. Right click copy. Paste that. Make sure that asterisk is not in there. Hit enter or tab. Cool. And then you can add all manner of information. So you can scroll all the way down here. You can add channel to channel matching, 3db bandwidth, base product number, and all that, so on and so forth. You can also add a footprint to this. So let's say you have a predefined footprint in a PCB library somewhere, and that's, I'm not gonna cover PCB libraries in this video, but you can add a footprint and say, maybe it's called a, a, a dip. Wait, actually, what's the package for this device? This is a, oh, okay. This is a BGA package with nine pins. So the package case is, there we go. You know, you can call it that. We're going to copy that package name, paste. And then you would put more information on here for a footprint that's specific to this device. And then the description would be um, ball, excuse me. Okay, so it won't let me type in the description, but that's fine. You can browse for a specific footprint. PCB footprints that are already installed and created. Just like how we are creating this schematic library, we would have to create our own footprint PCB library. But we don't have that, so let's keep going. You can also add pin information, simulation information like a SPICE file. This is very handy. And then there's IBIS models, software signal integrity, other parameters, links. You can put a link to a data sheet. Let's go ahead and do that. Right click, copy this link address from the website, paste the link. And this way you can hold down the control key and click to navigate to the object. If at any time you get confused about any of the options here, you can hit the F1 key and it will bring up a web page that will guide you and tell you like, it will help you with the specific thing you're looking at at any time. So that's great. Let's see if there's anything else to add. You can add rules to this device, for instance. Let's say you need to do an electrical uh, clearance constraint rule or something like that. And then you need this part to be at least 30 mils away from any tracks or SMD pads or any other device. Like the minimum clearance needs to be 20 mils from some other object, any other object. See, all of these things change, and then you click OK. And then that becomes that rule for that part. Graphical, um, let's see. No, there's nothing I want to change here in the graphical. I usually leave that the same. And if you do have the internet and the Altium free trial or just full Altium, you do get the benefit of edit supplier links. You can add. It will pull from the comment to look for the part you want. And then check this out. You can select one of these solutions for the part. Click OK. When you do that, it just automatically pulls in some information for the supplier and supplier part number. Now, I like to make these not visible. And there you go. So that's how you add information to your part. But I haven't even drawn the part yet, and that's fine. So what I'll do is create a symbol for this. I'm going to look in the data sheet. And then let's see what the data sheet has here. This part is supposed to look like something like this, or let's see. Yeah. Here, I can just straight up uh, copy this kind of in output or this pin drawing. So it has nine pins for each of the solder balls. I will just make a block. So it looks similar to this or something like that. 
going to minimize that. Go back into my schematic library. So if any time you get lost, you can click or double click on your schematic library. And also, how do I get to my list of parts in that schematic library? Just click on the schematic library tab or go to panels, schematic library to activate it and it will show up. So I'm back to my part that I'm editing and then I will place a rectangle, a box. Place that. Right there you go. And I want to add some pins to this. So I'll go to place pins. I'm going to use my space bar to rotate this. If I zoom in, you do that by holding down the control key and scrolling up. Now you may have, I have my fake configuration set to where I don't have to hold down the control key, but uh, for you, it might be the default there. So now you would zoom in and make sure this white X is, is on the outside. This is where the actual net connection is made. I have my pin number eight. So before I place that, hit the tab key. I can modify properties of the item attached to my cursor automatically by hitting the tab key before I place the part. So hit the tab key, you open the, the properties panel, which it opens automatically when you hit the tab key while you're in the part placement, the pin placement mode. So the properties panel opens up when you hit the tab key. I know I keep repeating it, but I just want to make sure. All right, and then you change the designator, then you hit the tab key again to go to your next fields. And the name can be whatever, well, not whatever, but here, let's pull the name for pin one. Pin number one will be NC1. So let's go back here. Name this NC1, hit tab. This is a passive electrical type. You can even put a description in here if you want. You can change the pin length if you don't like how long the pin is. I'll change this to 200 mils. Do I want symbols inside, fonts? And no, I, I don't want all that. I'll just go with this. So now we can hit the plus, the pause sign to unpause the operation. Now we're still in this operation. So let's go ahead and place that pin number one. Hit tab again because I want to edit this name before I place my next pin. The next pin will be, I guess I'll call this uh, NC2, right? And there we go. Notice how it automatically increments, which is very convenient, but I'm going to uh, go ahead and keep going. So COM1, let's change it to COM1. And you just keep doing this until all of the pins are placed. You can rotate a pin with the space bar like this. All right, this is my ground pin. And I think I have one more pin here. This should have nine pins. So what's the ninth pin? CB, great. Hit tab, there we go. All of my pins are placed. I'm going to right click to end the pin addition, like the pin adding mode. Or whatever mode you're in, you can right click to end that mode. I'm gonna move my pin number five with the space bar and we're dragging it around over here. And move my pin like this. I think I'll put ground on the bottom here, making sure that this white little box dot is outside. And then if I want to say, move my pins to the right a little bit, I can do that just so I can expand my box. So click your box there and then you do it like that. That way I can make space for my ground pin name. This looks good. 
Oh, just a quick note. For some reason, if you are not able to get in these big boxes like as easily, you may want to check your grid. So always stay on your default 100 mil grid. Sometimes you might hit the G key by mistake or something and the G key changes your grid. If you look in the lower left while I'm hitting the G key, it's changing. 10, 50, 100 mils, right? I want mine to be at 100 mils. Cool. Now you can save this schematic library. This is the first time I'm saving it. So here, I'll just give it the default name. So oh, there you go. It's taken all that effort to create one schematic symbol in the library, and we haven't even added the footprint. It It's time consuming, but you only have to do it once for each of your devices. And then you, for your next component, you would say find a capacitor, you fill in the information for the capacitor that you find, say on DigiKey or whatever, and then you repeat the same process. Once you've done that, let's say you have a cap capacitor, underscore zero two zero one or something generic and then you have this other one this is a resistor underscore zero five i mean zero eight zero five and of course you put a values in here and whatnot once you have this library you have three parts in your library and then you can save it then you want to open some schematic Let's say here in my example project, I open my schematic, I double click and open that. What I can do now is since this schematic library is part of my project, all I have to do is go to panels, components, or go to place part, and this components window will open, this components panel. And I click on this drop down, and my schematic library, see, uh, schematic lib, dot s e h lib shows up here because this is part of my project. I click on this and it has the parts that show up and I can just place them. I can right click and place my device. So that is how you create a schematic library. It is very involved. Uh, it's, a, it's a tedious process, but it's very satisfying and rewarding when you are able to create a full library from scratch or however you want to do it and just use the components build a good PCB very satisfying and once you've made the library you, you, you've made it for good all right so thanks so much for watching this video uh, if you want to see more of these videos give this a thumbs up and also subscribe and the thumbs up also help other people see the video as well okay and helps with the YouTube algorithm so Really appreciate that, uh, but you don't have to, of course, you know, you do whatever you want to do. Thanks for watching, and um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll be happy to address them. Thanks.